and access ribbon by pressing alt once done you can see excel giving suggestions to navigate through ribbon like f for file h for home n for insert and so on now let me take you through an example what I have here is a list of unpaid invoices that I would like to email to the collections team. But before that, I would like to make some changes to this report, like adding some conditional formatting to highlight all the invoices that are overdue by more than 90 days. Since I'm taking you through how to navigate through ribbon, I might not take you through any of the dedicated Excel shortcuts as we will be looking at them from the next session. So going to the first step, let me sort this data based on the customers. To do that, go to Home Ribbon, Alt H, and select Sort and Filter, and select Sort by Ascending Order. Great. Let me do that again. Alt H, S, and S. Next, I would like to highlight all the invoices that are aged more than 90 days. To do this, I would need to access the conditional formatting dialog box. But before that, we would need to select all the numbers for which we need to apply this formatting. And Alt H L. Now you can use the arrow key to select the condition that you would like to. I would like to go with greater than 90 days. There you go. Now let me add a subtotal. You can find subtotal in data tab. To access data tab, Alt A and to select subtotal B. I would like to subtotal based on sales. So you can select sales and enter. Great. How about adding a table? Alt N to go to the insert tab and T to add table. I think this report is good to go. And let me have a look at the whole report. Yeah, before that, let me auto fit this column so I can remove these hashes. Alt H O to go to formatting and I to auto fit column width. There we have it. And you can use Alt Q to look for any of the Excel options. You can search here. And I'd like to mail this report. Alt Q mail. Yeah, mail is attachment. Yeah, this is good go. So this is how you navigate through ribbon to select options. Let me put that all together and do that again. First, let's go with the sorting. Alt H S S. Then with the conditional formatting, touch L greater than 90 days. And we'll go with the subtotal now the table quickly look for any of the ashes yes alt h o i yeah it's good to go now mail so now that we are familiar with using excel options by navigating through ribbon Next, we'll dive deeper and learn individual Excel shortcuts. Since we will be covering a lot of them, please make sure you have something to list down all the shortcuts for which you have been using mouse often. It is really important to understand that to use most of these shortcuts, you should take the first step by using them whenever you work with Excel. At the beginning, you might feel a little uncomfortable and have the urge to use the mouse, but don't fall into that trap. To be realistic, one can't master all of them overnight, but over a period of time, I'll say three to four weeks, you can master most of them and work with so much speed in Excel going forward. Now we'll start with shortcuts related to workbook and worksheets. How can you open Excel file? A simple double click on Excel icon would do the job. But have you thought of creating a shortcut to open Excel application? 
If no, let me show you how. It's pretty simple. Go to the Excel icon in your desktop, right click and select properties. Now you can assign your own shortcut. I'd like to go with E and it picks up Control Alt by default. Now you can click apply. So when I press Control Alt E, there you go. Now let's have a look at some of the shortcuts related to workbook and worksheets. Let me start with how to open a saved file. Assume that you are working on some important report and you would like to open a previously closed one just to refer some information. This is how you do it. Control O and use the arrow key to select the recently closed file. Great. To create a new file, press Ctrl N. To save the file for the first time or to save an existing file with a new name or a new file format, you can use F12. So you can give any of the file name and just save it. Sample. To save the changes you made to this particular file, you can press Ctrl S. Now I would like to insert a new sheet. To do that, press Shift F11. And if you could remember from the previous video on how to access ribbon, using that, let me change the sheet's name here. Alt H O R. Let me do that again. Alt H O R. and hit enter. Going to the next one, if you're working on a laptop with small screen size, just remember this shortcut. Press Ctrl Shift F11 just to get rid of that ribbon. And this gives you additional 20% space to work around. You can also disable it by using the same shortcut. And to minimize the workbook, Use Ctrl F9. To close the active worksheet, you can press Ctrl W. And to close the Excel file, Alt F4. Now you can pause this video for a minute and have a look at all these shortcuts that we have seen till now. We have come to the end of this session. In the next session, we'll learn a lot of shortcuts related to working with data. See you there. So now that you're starting your way around knowing Excel shortcuts, let's get to know more shortcuts related to working with data. We shall start with some of the commonly used shortcuts. Let's start with how to cut data. Use Ctrl X and to paste it, use Ctrl V. So going on to the next one, Ctrl Z to undo any of the previous action. Excel remembers the last 100 actions performed by you on any active worksheet. Next, let's see how to copy. Ctrl C. Now instead of using Ctrl V to paste, let's use Ctrl Alt V to paste special. Using this option, you can paste as formulas, values, formats, and there are a bunch more options over there. For now, I would like to paste as link. Press Alt L. Great. So you can see here, so now if I change anything, it gets reflected here as they are linked. Please note that you cannot use pay special if you have cut data rather than copying it. Hopefully that should make sense. Next, let's see Control Y. There are two instances where you can use this. One is when you use Control Z and later decided that you don't want to go with that changes. In such case, you can use Control Y. Let me show you an example. I'm changing a couple of numbers here. And later I decided that I don't want to make any changes. So I press Ctrl Z. But what if I want to bring back all the changes that I made? Just press Ctrl Y. 
And the second instance where you can use this is to repeat action. This and paste special as values. What if I want to do the same action again? I don't want to use control alt v to pay special i just use control y and do it how many times you want it just repeat the same action so this is basically a redo shortcut so before going to the next one let's clean up this excel right next we'll see shortcuts for find and for replace control f to find any of the contents in the sheet or in the whole workbook let's find a text here right now control h to find and replace so instead of this abbreviation i'd like to give senior that's pretty simple and straightforward. Now let me take you through, go to dialog box. What I have here is a list of candidates, those who have been shortlisted for interview. A few of them have already cleared all of their rounds and a few of them got rejected. Now I would like to highlight all the interviews which are still pending. Now use F5 and Alt S to go to special let me do that again f i alt s there are a lot of options here i would like to go with the blanks and let me color it i'm jumping over the rest of the options not because they are not important but I don't want you to be overwhelmed with a lot of different options as of now. So next, how to spell check your report. Excel doesn't have option to highlight misspelled words as you type them. So using the shortcut can save you from getting yourself embarrassed by avoiding typos while submitting a very important report. To spell check, press F7 and correct the ones that you want to. Next, we'll look at filter. Let's filter out all the candidates who are hired. Select all, press Ctrl Shift L, and filter the candidates who are hired. To drop down, you can use Alt down arrow, and press space to check and uncheck. So basically, I'm going to check hired and hit enter there you go now pause this video and quickly recollect all of these shortcuts that we have seen now now that you have learned few basic shortcuts on how to work with data next let me take you through a list of shortcuts to edit enter and quickly copy adjacent set values so the first one press f2 to edit any of the cell let me add a status here And you can use shift F2 in case if you want to add any comments. Next we'll look at how to enter multiple lines in a single cell. For this option, once you're in edit mode, just press Alt Enter. And let me give a status here. But in case if you like to enter the same content in more than one cell, just use this shortcut. Before that, select the cells that you want to enter the content. And now press Ctrl Enter. Next we'll look at a couple of different shortcuts to copy values. So the first one, 
control D. Using control D copies all the contents right to downwards and this is nice and straightforward. And the next one is control R. I believe by now you would have guessed it right. It copies all the cells towards the right. I want to have this content down here and then I want to add some more comments pertaining to this particular candidate. How we would do that normally? Go here, copy and then paste it here and after that enter some data, right? Instead of that, you can use control apostrophe. What this shortcut does is copies the content from the bow cell and directly go into the edit mode. Now please take a minute and have a look at these shortcuts that we have covered till now. So next we have a list of shortcuts to insert, hide rows and columns and also to unhide rows and columns. To begin with the first one, Control plus. What this shortcut does is insert rows and columns. Let me show you an example. I would like to insert new rows here. Just select the number of cells where you want to insert your rows. If you'd like to go with inserting um, two rows, select two cells or five rows, select five cells. And press Ctrl plus and select entire row and click enter. Now, if you'd like to insert new columns and select entire column. Great. So how to delete rows and columns? Use Ctrl minus. Select the rows that you want to delete and press Ctrl minus. Entire row. Now to delete columns, entire column. Great. Next we'll have a look at the list of shortcuts to hide rows and columns. So how can we hide rows? Select the rows that you want to hide and press Ctrl open parenthesis. And to unhide rows, select one cell above the row that is hidden and one cell below the row and press Ctrl shift open parenthesis. To hide columns, you can use Ctrl close parenthesis and to unhide columns, you can use Ctrl shift close parenthesis. But here is a twist. If you are using Windows 7 or the BAO version, chances are you might not be able to use this shortcut to unhide columns. The reason is they are already assigned to another Windows shortcut to switch between keyboard, I think. So how can I enable it? Go to the language setting in your control panel. Language and click on advanced settings. Go to change language bar hotkeys and change key sequence. So now that I've changed it, ideally control shift would have been selected. So just go ahead and check non assigned and click OK and apply and OK. So now you can use um, the key to unhide columns. Next, let me show you how to group and ungroup rows or columns. I'd like to group these three status here. Select the columns that you want to group and press Shift Alt right arrow key. I'd like to go with columns. So select columns and hit enter. So once you group, if you'd like to collapse this grouping, press Alt A to go to the data tab and press H to collapse. Likewise, if you'd like to expand this grouping, press Alt A, J to expand. So how can you remove grouping? Select all the columns where you want to remove the grouping and press Shift Alt left arrow key. Select the columns, hit enter. Right? So the same logic applies to the rows. Let me quickly show you how. Select the rows that you want to group and Shift Alt right arrow key. Select rows, hit enter. 
right if you'd like to collapse this alt a h and to expand this alt a j to remove the grouping shift alt left arrow key and select rows hit enter so that's about it by now you would have realized that the letters and the symbols these shortcuts have give you a hint of the kind of action that it does for example ctrl r to copy to write ctrl c to copy ctrl plus to add a row or column ctrl minus to delete a row or column so what i'm trying to say is as you practice and try using these shortcuts you will remember them more easily than you can think of now please take a minute and have a look at these shortcuts that we have covered till now we are getting close to the end of this session i really appreciate your effort dedicating yourself to learn more shortcuts now let's have a look at how to access quick analysis what i have here is um sales data of five employees and i would like to quickly do some analysis to activate quick analysis press control q and use the arrow key and tap to go down and then arrow key to select the options that you want let me show you an example i would like to add total here not at the bottom but towards the right yeah and also i would like to quickly see all the months where employee sales have exceeded more than 75000 yeah greater than 75000 now let's quickly see if i can find any trend here looks like there are some upward trend in the month of september and december i don't want to go deep into it just feel free um to play around all these options that you have here so you get to know them better next we'll see the shortcut for flash fill if you're not sure about what is a flash fill let me show you an example but before that i would like to freeze this column to freeze this just navigate through ribbon um first go to view tab alt w and press freeze planes and freeze this yeah so back to flash fill i'd like to send the list of all these employees with the total sales to process commissions for them so what i'm doing here is typing the first name and that i don't want the last name i just need the initial and also add the total sales for them let me type in the first name i just need the initial of the last name and total sales for the year yeah now press control e there you go what this shortcut exactly does is look at the pattern in which the data is entered and fill in the same pattern in the below cells another example if i want to take the initials of these employees take the first letter of first name and last name and press control e i don't need this yeah can you see it just extracted the first letter of the first name and first letter of the last name it recognized the pattern and fills in the data is as simple as that next let's see how to create a chart i would like to do it with the same data so make sure what kind of data that you want to get into your chart i want to have the first name and the total sales now press alt f1 there you go this shortcut creates the chart in the same sheet now i can go ahead and use this chart in tomorrow's presentation no i'm just kidding <laughs> if you'd like to create a chart in a new sheet you can use f11 and press f11 there you have it 
Next, let's see how to create a table. Before that, select the data and press Ctrl T. If you're sure that you have a header in your table, uh, just check this or leave it as blank and hit enter. There you go. These are pretty much simple and straightforward. Now please take a minute and have a look at these shortcuts that we have covered till now. In this video, let's look at how to insert today's date and the current time and also how to create hyperlinks. So let's look at the first shortcut, how to insert today's date. Press Ctrl semicolon. And to insert the current time, Control shift semicolon. So how can you insert the date and time in a single cell? It's pretty simple. Control semicolon, and you can give a space and then use Control shift semicolon. That's it. Now let's see how to create a hyperlink. The shortcut to create hyperlink is Control K. Using this option, you can create hyperlinks to website or an existing file or to a particular sheet in this workbook or if you'd like to create a new document or if you'd like to link to email address you can very well do that also for this illustration i'd like to link sales data and change the name as revenue yeah that's it okay when I click here, it directly goes into the sales data. There you go. Now please take a minute and have a look at these shortcuts that we have covered till now. In this session, our aim is to get to know shortcuts related to formatting. To start off with, let me introduce a couple of commonly used formatting shortcuts. Let's begin with Control 1. What this shortcut does is open up the format cell dialog box you can see a lot of options that you have here are already available in the home ribbon but still there are quite a few additional options that are available here let me show you an example how would you type in the ordinal numbers maybe like this but this is not how it is supposed to look like the alphabet st should be on the top so let's see how we can do that Select the alphabets and press Ctrl 1 and now Alt E to select superscript and hit enter. There you go. Now you can just drag this and have all the ordinal numbers. So going on to the next one. These are pretty simple and straightforward. I don't want to spend so much time on this, but I'll just read it through. Ctrl B to bold, Ctrl I to italicize, and Ctrl U to underline, and Ctrl 5 to strike through. So now to create a border, Ctrl Shift ampersand, and to remove the border, Ctrl Shift minus. As I said, these are pretty much straightforward, and Let's quickly go into the next list of shortcuts. If you often work around a lot of numbers, dates or currencies, the next list of format shortcuts would be very much useful. Here they are. So the first one, Control Shift tilde would make the numbers as general. If you'd like to have the number format with two decimal, just press Control Shift exclamatory mark. And to apply the time format, Control Shift Art. And to have the date format, Control Shift Hash. If you want to display numbers as monetary values, you must format those numbers as currencies. To do this, you can use Control Shift Dollar. Great. And 
applying percentage format is pretty much straightforward control shift percentage so it's tricky did you see what I typed here before 10 and when I use control shift percentage I actually mean that it is 10% and why would it convert into 1000 it's because in general one is considered as 100% so when you apply percentage format the numbers are basically multiplied by 100 so the last one control shift carrot if you like to change the numbers as scientific numbers I haven't personally used them much but that's one worth mentioning so here we are at the end of this video in the next session we'll look at shortcuts for navigation and selection see you there congratulations for completing almost half of the course we have covered a lot of shortcuts already and hopefully you would have listed down all the shortcuts for which you tend to use mouse often and please don't stop with that start using them so next we'll see all the shortcuts for navigation the first one using arrow keys for navigation are known to all alternatively using tab moves one cell toward the right using shift tab moves one cell toward the left in the worksheet and we use alt tab to switch between application but using control tab goes to the next active worksheet it just shift between the worksheet so next using control arrow key um, moves to the edge of the data region of the worksheet so something like this control if you press control right arrow key down control left control up if you'd like to go to the last used cell of the active workbook you can press control end and control home would do the exact opposite using page down and page up would move the screen up and down but using alt page down and page up move the sheet towards the right and the left and to navigate between sheets you can use control page down and to select the previous sheet you can use control page up so that's pretty much it next we'll look at list of shortcuts for selection now please take a minute and have a look at these shortcuts that we have covered till now so far we have seen shortcuts related to working with data workbooks worksheets formatting and navigation next let's jump into learning shortcuts related to selection if you have noticed most of the shortcuts for navigation involves control button likewise for selection most of the shortcuts start with shift button so let's get into the first one using shift arrow key would extend the selection by one cell and using control shift arrow key would make the selection till the end control shift down arrow key let me apply a filter before moving on to the next one you can use alt down arrow key to select from the drop down list if you are in filter and using control shift end would make the selection till the last used cell and control shift home extend the selection to the beginning of the worksheet so the next shortcut control spacebar to select the entire column or shift spacebar to select the entire row if you'd like to include non-adjacent cells into the selection use shift f8 to make the selection shift down arrow key and now shift f8 and there you go now you can use this selection to make a chart if you want and if you use control shift page down it selects the next sheet and if you want to select the previous sheet with the current one you can use control shift page up 
Now please take a minute and have a look at these shortcuts that we have covered till now. Hi, welcome back. In this session, we'll dive deep in looking at various shortcuts for formulas. Let's say you are planning to have some lengthy formulas in your worksheets. For example, I've constructed one here to identify the current day of the week. Though there are simpler version of this, just like this. I just made this formula bigger just for the sake of this illustration. Now, as the formula gets bigger and bigger, you cannot view them completely in the formula bar. So when you use Ctrl Shift U, it expands the formula bar and you can have a full view of the formula. And to collapse it, again you can use Ctrl Shift U. There you go. Next, one of the commonly used uh, shortcuts related to formula is F4. This helps to cycle through all the combinations of absolute and relative reference in the formula. Let me show you an example. What I have here is um, sample sales data. First, I would like to add total. By the way, the shortcut to add total is alt equal to hit enter now you can copy down and i would like to also calculate commission now if you see when i copy this formula to the below cell it shows an error because when you copy the formula to the below cell the reference to this formula also came down from g1 to g2 so before copying it to down you will need to fix that. So select the cell that you want to fix and press F4 to make it as absolute reference. And now hit enter. You can copy it now. There you go. You can also use F4 to cycle through um, different combination like absolute reference to the cell or to the row or to the column or nothing so using f4 just cycles through them so the next shot that we are going to look at is f9 uh, using f9 calculates all the worksheet in all the open workbook if the calculation option is set to manual the reason to set calculation to manual is when you have thousands of formulas across the workbook, each time you enter data, the Excel would calculate the formula and that's going to take quite some time. When you set it into manual, you can complete all the work and you can press F9 to calculate the sheet. And by the way, you can set the calculation option as manual by going to the formulas tab. You have three options here. First one is automatic, automatic except data tables and manual when the sheet is set to manual you can either press f9 which calculates the whole worksheet or you can also use shift f9 just to calculate that particular sheet so next let's see the shortcut for array formula what i have here is a list of quantities sold with the unit price i would like to see what's the total sales so equals sum multiplied by now press control shift enter to make this formula as array formula this is one of the basic array formula and they are pretty useful so going on to the next shortcut control tilde to display all the formulas right and you can use the same shortcut again to disappear these formulas and you can use control open bracket to trace the precedence which means the numbers from which this result is derived and you can use control close bracket 
to trace the dependence. These two shortcuts are pretty useful when you have the data in one sheet and the formulas in a completely different sheet or a different workbook. Now these are the few list of shortcuts um, for working with formulas. Quickly please have a look at them. By now we have covered over 100 shortcuts and to make it much more easier, in this session I'll show you how to create your own shortcut for the task that you use often. Click on this little drop down icon to customize the quick access toolbar and click on more commands. From here, either you can select from popular commands or the commands not in ribbon, all commands, you have a bunch more different options here. You can just go through them. And to add any of the shortcut that you use often, just select the command. I'm going to select freeze planes and then add. That's it. And to remove, just click on here and then remove. And click OK. I have quite a few options here. Let me show you how it works. If you could see now there are three options in quick access toolbar. By default, a series of shortcuts would have been assigned to these commands starting from Alt 1. When you press Alt, you could see what is the number assigned to these commands. The first icon what I have here is email and when I press Alt 1, it's attached into a mail and it's ready to send. So that's pretty much it. In this way, you can add as many options into the quick access toolbar, but just you have to remember that what is the shortcut you have assigned. I would suggest maybe you can add up to maybe six to eight or nine. So you won't find that difficult to remember all the shortcuts in the quick access toolbar. Now we have come to the end of this course. I really thank you. Hold on. Can I make this conclusion video with a shortcut? Of course I can. Cells will now be spoken on enter. For the last time, once again congratulations for taking the effort to learn Excel shortcuts. You've achieved a great deal, but this is just the beginning. My advice is to never stop learning and acquiring new skills. Next step for you would be to knowing more advanced Excel options, formulas, mastering charts and pivots and of course learning VBA, because it doesn't look good when you put a lot of effort and valuable time to do repetitive Excel tasks when they can be easily completed by me in no time, only if you could write few lines of codes. I know that was ridiculous. I hope you have enjoyed this course and I really enjoyed making it. I wish you all the best for taking the step forward to be super productive. Thank you.